Shabbat Shalom. My favorite part of the service is the Aleinu when the children help lead it because they do this little dance move where they bop up and down. In fact, they often coordinate it before they come up, like who's going to go up first and who's going to go down first. Partially it's charming because they're adorable. But I think the bigger effect for me is that they're really enjoying praying together in that moment. They are doing it as a community effort. If I were to stand up here and bop up and down for the Elenu, I'd look like a whack-a-mole, right? It doesn't, have, it doesn't have the same effect as when they do it together. There's so much that we do at Beth Torah where we create real holiness because of how we operate in community. And that's part of what the Parsha teaches us this week. There is a verse that we read, you shall not profane my holy name, that I may be sanctified in the midst of the Israelite people. So Josh Cohen, 21st century Jerusalem commentator, he points out that last week's Parsha was called Kiddoshim. From the beginning words of the Parsha, Kiddoshim Tihiyu, you will be holy. And Josh says that this week's Parsha, Amor, is a follow-up on that. Because Kedoshim doesn't properly lay out how to be holy, in his opinion. And he feels like Amor follows along with the details of how to make that happen. At first glance, it seems like there are random things put together in this Parsha. It starts out with rules about how the priest should behave to remain in a state of purity. And then it moves into explanations about the holidays. But what Josh says is... It's really spelling out who shall be holy, the priests, who are the servants of God and the servants of the people Israel. Where should they be holy? In the sanctuary. How should they be holy? Using the sacred vessels and carrying out the sacrifices. And when should they be holy? On the Sabbaths and the sacred times. But why do we need to answer this question of the who, the what, the when, the how? Josh says things don't stay holy. Holiness is constantly in flux. A priest will walk by a dead lizard and will become ritually impure, and you have to lift the priest's holiness up again. Or Sabbath gives way to the weekday. It's not a holy time until Shabbat circles around again. Holiness is a constant revolving effort to lift up the Jewish people. So how does that relate to us? Well, I think the answer lies in the phrase from our portion, in the midst of the Israelite people. The Talmud teaches about prayer in section Brachot. And there are some prayers where it's ideal to have a communal setting, right? The Elenu is much more charming when the children are dancing together, and hopefully they'll grace us with a... Um, that moment a little later in the service. But there are other prayers that not only is it nice to have multiple people saying the prayer, but it's actually required. So this piece of Talmud says, where do we get the idea that the Kedusha, that prayer where we say Kadosh, 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 where do we get the idea that that requires a minion? It comes from our verse, Betoch B'nai Yisrael. God can only be made holy in the midst of the Israelite people. And we see that happen. We saw it happen last Sunday. We had Karen Laner Mitzvah Day. Thank you, Beth, so much for organizing and everyone who helped captain that and put it together. If I had gone to a soup kitchen by myself last Sunday, that would have been a nice thing to do. That would have been a mitzvah. But that holiness was really maintained and elevated when we all came together and we as a community were all over the city making the world a better place. We see holiness happen in the demographics of our synagogue. We need each and every age group here to really create a holy space. We need our younger people to give us fresh ideas and energy. We need our middle-aged people to donate their time, their talent, and their treasure to keep this place going. And we need our oldest members to be our institutional memory and our sages. We wouldn't be as holy without everyone together. 
But how does this idea of everyone being holy mesh with the idea at the beginning of our Parsha that the priest in particular has to be kept holy? Because often we have this idea the priest is above us all or more special than the rest of us. And actually, if you look at the text, the priests are the servants of God. And their job? Not so glamorous. Their job is actually to sweep up ashes and wipe up blood. It's in the mundane details that they make the holy community. Now we, as a people, when we went into covenant with God at Sinai, were told, now you all are mamlechet kohanim. You are all a nation of priests. So the stories in Amor about how to elevate the priest's holiness are a greater metaphor for the rest of us about how to maintain holiness. It's a constant effort, and it's done in community. We, too, make the world holy when we re recognize that we are servants to God and the community. Being holy isn't always glamorous. It's showing up to Sunday morning minion before you go to brunch or to the gym to work out. Being holy is visiting someone sick in the hospital, even though most of us don't really enjoy going into hospitals. Being holy is being respectful of someone you don't like in this community because you want to create a peaceful environment for everyone. Being in community is holy, and it's about service. So to conclude, we are Mamlechet Kohanim. We are the kingdom of priests. And that means that we are the servants of God and the people Israel. Holiness is in constant flux, and we constantly need to maintain it. Many people do good things for us at Beth Torah. So if you are one of the contributors to our holiness, I have to tell you, it always astonishes and touches me how much people are willing to give of themselves to Beth Torah to create community and to create holiness. If you're not yet a contributor to the community, a really good way to start is to express appreciation today of someone who is. Thank them for baking the cookies. Thank them for setting up the tablecloths. Thank them for educating our children. And a next good step is to think of one small way that you'd like to become part of supporting the community. Because as God teaches, God can only be sanctified in the midst of the Israelite people. Shabbat Shalom.